Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaste. Namaste, everyone. This evening on page 102, we're going to begin our discussion of the Hanuman Chalisa. And remember, Chalice means 40, and Chalisa means adventures. And put them together, you got 40 verses which describe the adventures. They're really fun things you can do in uh, Sanskrit and Avadi and uh, uh, the various languages that have evolved from these roots like Bhojpuri and Mithili and it's just like in when you go into the mountains there's a group of languages called Pahari and it, it starts from Nepal and it goes to Kashmir and there are so many dialects depending on the various regions and it's all Pahari Vasha but there is uh, Kumoni and there's Garwali, there's Kashmiri, there's Ladakhi, there's Nabari, there's Nepali uh, across the mountains because I know the mountain dialects better but in the same way on the plains you can go from where I used to live in Birbhum uh, or that was Bengal side, but on the other side, on the Bihar side of the border, it was called Sindhbhum. And they uh, spoke a dialect of Bihari or of, of uh, Bhojpuri, which was mixed with Bengali. Uh, all the way from Dumka and the Santal Parganas, you would go, if you go west towards uh, uh, Patna or Ranchi, and you get the various dialects of, of Bhojpuri until you come to Mithila and Janakpur, and then you come into Mithili Vasha, and then you go, go towards Ayodhya, and you come to Avadi, and you go more towards Brindavan, and you get Vijvasi, and then all this related group of languages. I Imagine you have the same things in Tamil. Is it true? Are, are they called by different names? They just sound different. <laughs> they sound different, but they're not different names or different dialects. Or, you know, I understand there are like 222 different dialects among the 28 recognized languages. So, and each of them has a name and a characteristic, and they sound different. Boy, do they sound different. <laughs> uh, I remember going to the Tatipara Hut, which was uh, th about three kilometers from Bokreshwar, and I would go there, and I would say, please give me some food, and the sh sh shopkeepers would shout out, anyone here from Bokreshwar? I can't understand a word this man is saying. Uh, uh, so Jushi was always my Duvashi. He was my translator. Let's talk about the Hanuman Chalice as the adventures of Hanuman. Cleansing the mirror of my mind by the dust of the respected guru's lotus feet. <laughs> what a great picture. I mean, I need something. I, we didn't have Windex in those days. <laughs> you know, something to spray on the mirror to make it shine, make it clean. So we took the dust of the guru's lotus feet and we used that as the, the, the balm with which to, to wipe away the dross from our minds. I described the pure welfare of the respected Ram the giver of the four rewards, dharma, artha, kama, moksha, the ideal of perfection, the needs of, for physical sustenance. What are the material resources necessary to achieve that ideal? Uh, the culmination of desire. I just want every other desire to go away. Don't bug me. And liberation, otherwise known as self-realization. Buddhi king. I really realizing myself to be of little or no intelligence. Take your choice. I don't want to put it to a vote, but I have either little or no intelligence whatsoever. I pray to the son of the wind, that's Pavansutta, that's Hanuman, please give me strength, intelligence, and knowledge, and remove all pains and impurities if you don't have anything else to do today. Get to work. Victory to Sita and Ram, Siyabur, Ram Chandra Ki Jai. Victory to Hanuman, the son of the wind. Victory to the great Lord Shiva, the husband of Uma. Uma Pati Mahadev, the great Lord Shiva, 
The Umapati, who is the Pati of Uma, <laughs> that's Mahadev. Victory to Hanuman, the ocean of wisdom, Ganagunasada. Victory to the king of the monkeys who enlightens the three worlds. The ambassador of the respected Ram is the repository of extraordinary powers. In fact, a little later on, we're going to find that Ashta Shiddhi Nomdidi Ketatha. He had the, all the eight Siddhis uh, Anima, Lagima, Mahima, Prapti. That's four. We'll get to the rest later. Uh, he, he has the repository of extraordinary powers, the son of the shining one, Anjani Putra, whose name is the son of the wind, Bhavana Sutta. Oh, no. His nam is Bhavana Sutta, the son of the wind. Great hero, most courageous, endowed with a very strong body, Bhadra Angi. His anga is like a vajra, like a diamond, or, you know, or like lightning. It's so strong, it's so hard. Uh, uh, he is the destroyer of negativity and the friend of purity. His golden body is beautifully dressed. He's not a slob like some of the sadhus in the Devi Mandir. Uh, he large rings adorn his ears and curly locks of hair. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, he holds a thunderbolt and a flag in his hands and wears a sacred thread of munja grass across his shoulders. We talked about that the other night. We've got this nine threads. Navabhishtantar biyuktam trigunam devatamayam upavitamayada thangri haritam sarishvara. He has that upavit, that yagyo upavitam. Paramam Pavitram of the greatest purity, the greatest clarity, Shama Dhamma Tapasso Cham, Shantir Arjivam Evacha, Ganam Bhiganam Astikyam. These are the nine qualities which are Brahma Karma Swabhavacha. These are the intrinsic nature of a knower of divinity. And he has the sacred thread, Mundigras. Uh, across his shoulders. He is the, an incarnation of, of the cause of peace, Shankar. Uh, he, he, Shankar, and he is the son of the king of the mon monkeys. Keshari was the king of the monkeys, Keshari Nandan. Uh, the radiance of his light is worshipped in the world. He is full of knowledge, Vidyaban. He, he did you on. He, he's he's the, the holder of the, all the knowledge, the, the, the employer of the knowledge. We talk about Shaktiman Vidyavan. Uh, he is the holder of knowledge, possessing all qualities, guni, ati, chapter, extremely intelligent or clever, as you like to put the word. Uh, uh, he is always eager to serve the respected Ram. Uh, he is always delighted in hearing stories of the Lord Ram. Lakshman and Sita dwell in his mind. In a very small form, Shukshma uh, he uh, sh showed himself to Sita. Remember, he took a form uh, is a very, very small, and he, he entered into the Ashok a garden, and he saw, showed himself to Sita. Sita said, what, 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 this little tiny monkey has come to visit me, and he thinks he's going to defeat all of these great big giant Asuras? What nonsense! You're, they're going to step on you immediately, and then, assuming a tremendous form, he burned the city of Lanka. The kingdom of the ego was destroyed in a moment, and he just grew and grew and grew and growing, 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 and Hanuman assumed this great, magnificent, tremendous form, and he defeated all the Asuras. With a gigantic form, he slayed the demons and made the respected Ram Chandra's mission successful. He was charged with the task of finding Sita and bringing news of Sita back to Ram. Where is she? How is she? What's she doing? Does she really want Ram to come and rescue her, or is she happy where she is? 
And Hanuman said, well, you know what? I'm also a general in the army of Ram, so I'm going to also look out for the weaknesses and note the strengths of the enemy so when we come uh, to fight with them, we'll know just what's, uh, what's uh, about to take place. We won't be caught by surprise. So he, he, uh, he fought with the demons and found out who were the strong ones and who were the weak ones, and he made Ram's mission successful. He saved Lakshman's life by bringing the life-giving herb. We told the story how he went to the Himalayas to find the herb, the Sanjeevani, to give life to, to Lakshman, and he couldn't think, he couldn't recognize which herb. Every herb on the mountain said, hey, take me, take me. And he said, wait, I, I don't want to bring the wrong one. So he picked up the whole mountain. Uh, and the, the respected Ram was so happy that he hugged him with delight. And you don't know what it's like to get hugged by Ram. It's really cool. <laughs> the Lord of Raghu, and that, you know, Raghu Pati is really the Lord of light. Raghu is illumination. And so the Lord of Raghu praised him highly, that's Ram. Uh, you are as beloved to me as my brother Bharat. Bharat is illumination, Bharat is light. Bha means to shine, and Bharat, the Bharat Bush is the land of India, the land where the light of wisdom always shines. I love you, Hanuman, just like I love Bharat. You are as dear to me as, as the light of wisdom, <laughs> my brother. Thousands will sing your glory, even Swami Satyananda and Sri Manda Devi Mandir, thousands of years later will come and sing about me, said the Lord of Lakshmi with a fond embrace. Sanak and his brother Shanandan, Shanatan, Shanakumar, Brahma, and other munis like Narad Shara, that's Saraswati, as well as Sesh, the serpent that holds aloft the universe, Yum, the god of death, Kuber, the god of wealth, and the gods of all the quarters, wherever they may be, poets, nor even scholars can enumerate your glory. None of us have the capacity to, to really tell where are the ends of infinity. How can we explain your glory? You're just so much. You're too much. You're over the top. You're a number 10. You, had, you gave a great benefit to Sugriv by making his association with the respected Ram and who placed his lost kingdom at his feet. So Sugriv was the exiled uh, king of the monkeys. He was the brother of Bali. Bali uh, took over the kingdom, kicked out Sugriv. They were two twin brothers. And Bali said, well, I'm going to be the only one to be king here. You get out, take a hike. And he not only took a kick Sugriv out of the kingdom, but he took over his wife. He kicked out, fired all the ministers, fired everybody who was loyal to Sugriv. He kicked them out with him. And Sugriv went to live in a cave on the side of the Rishimuk mountain. And Hanuman found Ram and said, oh, I think this is a good association for Sugriv. Grieve, I'm going to bring Ram to Sugriv, and Sugriv can find Sita, and Ram can restore the lost kingdom. This seems like a good deal. <laughs> I mean, if you're into business, eh, you got to make a trade. Let's make a deal. <laughs> yes. And so Ram placed the kingdom at his feet. You gave the mantra which was accepted by Bibishan, and he became the king of Lanka, as the whole world knows. Bibishan took the name of Ram, he took the mantra of Ram, Om Ram Ramaya Nama, and he, Bibishan means discrimination, and he had the discrimination. Now the kingdom of ego was no longer ruled by the one of ten senses, he was the one, he was, the kingdom was ruled by discrimination. What a victory. Whew. One time in your childhood, believing the sun to be a delicious fruit, which is millions of miles away, 
You jumped up and swallowed it. You leaped over the ocean, keeping the ring of the respected Ram in your mouth, thinking that it was nothing extraordinary. I think it's quite extraordinary. But you, Ram said, go find Sita. And Hanuman said, well, if I find her, how will I make her believe that I actually came from you? She's been surrounded by Asuras and demons day and night. They're threatening her. They're causing her all manner of havoc and distrust. Uh, Ram said, here's my ring, the ring that Sita gave me for our wedding. I'm giving it to you. You take it and show this ring to Sita and she'll believe that you're actually a messenger from Ram. Do you believe? <laughs> okay. All right. And you didn't think that was anything extraordinary. All the difficult tasks in the world become easy by your grace. Uh, if you come along with us uh, in every test that we perform, it's easy. In fact, it's fun. In fact, we can have a good time. Ever go to San Francisco with Three Mile? You just walk down the street and everybody, the, the crowds part, and everyone comes up and says, oh, what a beautiful sari you're wearing. What a beautiful dress. Everything becomes easy by your grace. You are the beloved of the respected Ram and you protect his entrance. Nobody gets to Ram without seeing Hanuman. That means you need pure devotion to get to the illumination of consciousness. You must have devotion in order to get to the illumination of consciousness. You can't do it by the intellect alone. You cannot think your way to God. you got to love her with all your heart. No one may enter without your order. Who come go? All happiness is attained by taking refuge in you. What fear can come when you are the protector? Please control your brilliant light. <laughs> the three worlds tremble at the sound of your tremendous roar. Your light is so bright that I can't see anything else beyond it. In fact, it's hard to know that there are others beyond the light. That light is so radiant. All I can see is your light. Ghosts or demons cannot even come close to he who chants the name of the great warrior Hanuman. You got nothing to fear. Not even ghosts, not even goblins, not even demons. Not, all infirmities will be cured and all difficulties removed by continually chanting the name of the brave Hanuman. Nashe rog hare sapira. You take away all the pira, all the affliction, all the, all the distress, and nashe rog destroys all the sickness, all the infirmities. Hanuman will dispel all difficulties from anyone who remembers him in thought, action, speech, and meditation. Oh, that's cool. So now we've got Ganesh, who's the Nayak. He takes away all the Vigna. And we've got Durga, who takes away all the Durgam. And we've got Hanuman, who takes away all the difficulties. Shankatate, Shankat Mochan. <laughs> he, he takes away all the Shankat. All the difficulties, all the durgam, all... In fact, it was an interesting question I had today sometime. I don't remember it was between... In, 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 the, in the midnight shift. And it was... A, 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 they asked, well, wh wh which one should we pray to? Uh, Ganesh or Durga or Hanuman? And actually, they're all one. <laughs> They're all one. They're just put into a different context, into a different story. There is only one God with many names. And sometimes we call her Ganesh. And sometimes we call him Durga. And sometimes we call upon Hanuman. And Ganesh takes away the Vigna, the difficulties. And Durga takes away the Durgam, the difficulties. And Hanuman takes away the Shankar, the difficulties. <laughs> and there is only one God, Ekam Shad Bhutta Bhavanti. 
He has many names. He's one supreme divinity called by many names. Above and beyond all is the King Ram, performer of purifying austerities. You help him in all his works. He's above them all. So you can say, well, wait a minute. Why are these scriptures saying this is Vishnu is the supreme God and Hanuman's the supreme God and Shiva's the supreme God and Rama's the supreme God and Durga's the supreme God? And why are all these conflicting statements going on? And I suggest they don't conflict with one another at all. They're all the same deity. It's one God who appears as Srima, who appears as Durga, as Chandi, as Kali, as Durga, as, as Hanuman. And we put her in the context of different stories. It's one supreme divinity known by many names. Hori Amanth, Hori Katha Amanth. God is is infinite and the stories about God are infinite and just because we tell different stories in different times and different contexts and different characters and different uh, languages it doesn't mean we're talking about many gods it's all the story about God so we're devotees of the one God and sometimes she's Hanuman and sometimes he is Durga any desire with which people come to you is fulfilled by you with the fruit of the tree of life. In all four ages, that's Koli Yug, Dwapar Yug, Treta Yug, Dwapar Yug, and Koli Yug. In all four ages, the greatness of your light is known and the world is aware of your extraordinary attainment. Everybody knows how to <laughs> You protect the performers of purifying austerities and saintly beings. You destroy the evils of duality and you are loved by Ram. <laughs> ah, do you need any more qualifications? <laughs> you are the bestowers of the eight powers of attainment as well as the nine forms of wealth. Uh, this is the boon that Mother Sita gave you. So Hanuman came to Sita after burning down Lanka. He said, Mom, would you like to come with me? She said, no. The glory of slaying the ego Robin belongs to Ram. So I'm not going to leave with you. I'm going to wait here until Ram comes to get me. And Hanuman said, it won't be long. I'm going right home, tell Ram where you are, what you're doing, how things are going. And he's coming here with Sugreed's army, and we're going to march right into this kingdom of ego, and, and we're going to break down the barriers of the ego, and we're going to bring you home. And Sita said, I like that. <laughs> and I give you a boon. I'm going to give you the eight siddhis. You can become very small. You can become very big. You can get anything you want. You can become very light. You can become very heavy. You can become all kinds of things. There are eight siddhis. Do you know in the, um, in the Agni Prajwalita uh, of both the Cosmic Puja and the Advanced Shiva Puja, you will find a list of the eight siddhis. Also in the Annapurna Sahasranam Stotram, uh, you'll find a list of the eight cities. I don't have them all memorized anymore because I'm so used to performing them. And the nine forms of wealth are also included because they, they're just nine different kinds. You're, there's the wealth of peacefulness and the contentment and satisfaction and the, the wealth of knowledge and the wealth. You read them in either the Cosmic Puja, the Advanced Shiva Puja, or the Annapurna Sahasranam. In those three texts, you'll find the enumerations of the Ashta Siddhi and the Nova. Navaniti. Uh, this is the boon that Mother Sita gave you when you told her that Ram is on his way. The help is on the way. The cavalry is coming. Don't worry, Ma Sita. Uh, 
I'm going right home now to tell Ram where you are. You have the nectar of Ram's love. You will always remain the servant of the respected Ram. By singing your praises, one can get Ram and be freed from the pains of many births. I, I, even if it takes you a few minutes to sing this, these 40 verses about the adventures of Hanuman, as long as you're submerged into the love and the, the devotion of Hanuman, you are free from the pains of all births. And that sanskar that you're preparing goes with you into your future births. And so you, you are purifying all of your past and preparing for yourself a beautiful future. Ultimately, such devotees will go to the city of Ram, Raghupatipur, Jai, and always take birth with devotion to God. <laughs> Pretty cool. Ah, if you sing about Hanuman, you go to the city of Ram and take birth with devotion to God. There is no need to contemplate other gods. By worshiping Hanuman, all happiness is attained. All difficulties may be removed, all pains destroyed for one who remembers the brave Hanuman. Jai, 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 Hanuman Gushai. Victory, victory, victory to Hanuman. Give us your mercy. Do and get. Kripa Karu Guru Deva Kinai. Oh, beloved guru, you are the, the re, beloved guru to us. You show us the way to have devotion to God. Victory, victory, victory to you. Whoever recites these verses 100 times will be released from all bondage and attain supreme happiness. Whoever recites these verses about Hanuman will attain perfection and will become the friend of Lord Chief. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I, Hanuman is the incarnation of Shiva. Why won't Shiva be pleased? Of course he'll be free, pleased. Tulsi Das, who is always at the feet of Rama, prays, O oh Lord, please, always dwell in my heart. O oh, son of the wind, who removes all difficulties in the form of the image of welfare, Always dwell in my heart together with Lakshman, Sita, and Ram, the king of all gods. Victory to Sita and Ram. <coughs> Victory to Hanuman, the son of the wind. Victory to the great Lord Shiva, the husband of Uma. Great. Jai Hanuman. Bajaran Boli Ki Jai. Bajaran. His unga, his body, is like a diamond, as hard as a diamond, or it's like it's shining like lightning. It's like Vajra, his ung. Vajra Mboli, he's the, the one of strength. He has the strength of the body, which is hard as a diamond, which is as luminous as lightning. Ki <laughs> Victory to you. And now let's see if we can't talk about the Bajarang Ban. And this is the arrow of the one who's got a body that's made out of lightning or diamonds or as strong as, it is, as his body is as strong as can be. Surely he who worships Hanuman with firm faith Humility, love, and respect is sure to attain perfection. Nischai prema pratitate. Surely, without a doubt, nischa prema pratitate. With the greatest love, with the greatest respect, with the greatest faith, with the greatest humility, he's sure to attain perfection. Victory to Sita and Ram, victory to Hanuman, the son of the wind, victory to the great Lord Shiva, the husband of Uma. Praise, victory, 
to Hanuman, the well-wisher of saints. He likes us all. <laughs> he, he wishes us all well. In fact, he'll pr protect us and try to help us and get, in getting to our goals. Oh, Lord, please listen to my prayer. Please fulfill the wishes of the people without delay. Please grant the greatest comfort with great haste. Don't delay. Excellent. <laughs> right now. Fut, fut, fut. Fut the fut. Ah. When you jumped over the fathomless sea, Shursha expanded her vast body. She, she was the, the one sent to test Hanuman. She came in the, fort of a de, in the form of a demoness and said, you've got to enter into my mouth. Everyone who comes across this sea is my food. No one can cross the ocean unless they, I get to eat them. Every, that's how I subsist. That's how I live. I eat everything that tries to cross the sea. Now you come into my mouth and see if you can escape from my digesting you. I'm going to devour you. Hanuman had the eight siddhis. He made himself very large. Susha opened her mouth larger, and then he made himself even bigger, and she made her mouth even wider, and he said, I, your mouth is too small. He made himself even bigger, and she couldn't, she kept expanding her mouth and expanding her mouth until it was gigantic, oh, a lady with a big mouth. And then, suddenly, he made himself very tiny, <laughs> and he entered into her mouth, and then he turned around and came right back out, and he said, okay, you see, I entered your mouth and you couldn't eat me. <laughs> I won. Now I'm going to do Ram's work. If you need to eat me, then I'll come back after I finish Ram's work, and then you can eat me. She said, no, 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 I was sent here by the gods to test you. <laughs> so you won the test. You won the examination. So uh, uh, Sursa uh, expanded her vast body and it became bigger and bigger and bigger and then he became tiny and entered right in, came right back out and was saying, moving on, Lankini stopped you. And you know what? Lankini was the demon who was put in front of the gate of, of Lanka, of the city of Lanka, by Brahma. Said, Brahma said, Lankini, you protect uh, this city. Uh, don't let anybody come in. But if you ever get whapped in the mouth by a monkey, uh, then know that the demise of Ravan is at hand and the city will be sacked. Well, Lankini stopped Hanuman. He became really tiny and he tried to walk past her. <laughs> and she said, aha, tiny one, you little monkey. Uh, where do you think you're going? Nobody gets past Lankini. And Hanuman became very big and gave her a whap in the mouth. <laughs> and with a swift kick of your foot, you sent her to the realm of the gods. <laughs> Enough of Lankini. She was the soul of Lanka, the soul of the kingdom of the ego. Praise to Bibishan, who, uh, that's discrimination, that was the brother of Ravan, who received such comfort. Just seeing Sita, he received salvation. Destroying the garden, you threw it in the sea. So when uh, Hanuman went to the garden where all the fruits were, the special garden of Ram, he tore it up and they said, okay, let me see what these soldiers are made of anyway. These protectors, the guardians of Ravan's special garden. And he tore up the garden, threw it in the sea. Seeing your agitation, even the god of death became nervous. <laughs> huh. You slayed the demon Akshay Kumar. And so uh, Ravana sent uh, Akshay Kumar and Aksh, uh, Aksh was uh, Ravana's second son. And he, he said, oh, I'm going to be, be, uh, I'll defeat this monkey in a moment. Let me go there. And Hanuman defeated the demon Akshay Kumar. And he burned down Lanka with his fiery tail. Remember, they set his tail on fire. And Ravana said, I want to see the children laugh at the agony of a monkey dancing in the streets with his tail on fire. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then Hanuman burned down the whole city. Lanka was burnt like pine pitch. All the gods rejoiced over this excellent accomplishment. Do not delay now, O master of all causes. Be merciful to me, O my innermost self. Hey, Hanuman, you are my most innermost self. Be merciful. Give me your kripa. Kripa karaku, or antarjami. Antaryami means my innermost self. Kripa, do and get. You give me that grace. Victory to he who gave life to Lakshman. Remember, he brought the Sanjeevani, the life-giving herb. Do away with, totally destroy all pain and agitation. That's the mission we're sending you on. Victory to the support of the mountain, Giridhar. Victory to the ocean of happiness, Sukhsagar. Victory to the powerful warrior in front of the city of the gods. And these are really fun. Now we're getting into an area which we call Pach Pach Vidya. Uh, this is all the alliterations, all the bij mantras that come into alliteration, which create a bhavana and a vibration and a special attitude, which you can, you can't really translate. You can't. You have to feel it. You have to understand it in your heart. Let me just do a little bit of it. Om hanu 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 manta hatile boy riti maru badra ki kile gada badra le boy riti maro maharaj prabhu das ucharo om kara kum kara prabhu daba kum badra gada hanu bilamba nalabo om ring 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 hanu manta kapisa om 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 hanu ur ur sisa satya ho ur shapat the pai ke ram duta dor mar jai ke jay 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 hanumant agada dukha pavat jan ke ki aparada bhuja jap tap neem achara na ki janat kon das tumara it gets to be really a lot of fun uh, and there's a lot of various branches of uh, this Pach Pach Vidya. Uh, uh, we, we can get into that in other uh, stotrams and stutis. Uh, uh, you'll especially find it in the Aparajita stotra. You'll find it in uh, various Kali st uh, stotranjali. Uh, there's uh, uh, some other... Um, uh, there are many other pieces which have that kind of Pach Pach Vidya that alliteration, that poetry, which really doesn't have an intellectual definition. Let's see how I translated it. Om Hanu 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 Hanuman Hanuman. With great obstinance, you killed the enemies with the spikes of your thunderbolt. <laughs> well, Hanu is a chin. <laughs> I mean, that's the name of the chin. And so the, the chin, he was Hanuman because he fell on the chin and instead of breaking the chin, he broke a rock. And he split the earth apart because he was so strong, he had the badrang. He had a, his body was made like, a, like lightning or diamond and he fell on the rock and he broke the rock. Uh, so, uh, Om Hanu 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 Hanuman. With great obstinance, you killed the enemies with the spikes of your thunderbolt. With your club and your thunderbolt, you slayed your enemies. When your servants called for your help, O great king, O Lord. So all of us who were serving you, all the warriors in your army, we were following you into battle. We got into trouble. We called Hanuman. And he came. <laughs> and he took his, uh, his weapons and he saved us. When you were called with the sound of Om and Hum, without delay you come with your thunderbolt and club. Oh Maya, 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 Hanuman, King of the Monkeys, Om, cut the ego, cut the ego, cut the ego of your enemies, you who are the head, the highest or ultimate. 
Oh, you were completely true to your oath to Hori. You, you promised uh, Vishnu that you were going to come down and fight with him and protect him and make him a victor and make him defeat the ego. You were completely true to that oath. The ambassador of Ram slayed all enemies. Victory, victory, victory to Hanuman who is fathomless. Why do people suffer? What wrong do they do? Oh, Mahanuman, this servant does not know how to worship, to constantly remember your mantra, to perform purifying austerities, or to perform good conduct. Na mantram, na yantram, tadapicha na dhyane, stuti mako. I don't know nothing. Honestly, I'm quite useless. Kuputra jayeta kachita pikumata na bhavati. I am kuputra. I am uh, your Adam Santan, your worthless child. I don't know anything, or not enough. Uh, so, or I don't know to perform good conduct, to perform purifying austerities, or to constantly remember your mantra. He who has firm faith in you has no fear in the jungle, in the garden, on the path, on the mountain, or at home. Doesn't even fear his wife. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> With folded hands and touching your feet, we request you to fulfill our desire of attaining divinity. Victory to the son of the wind and powerful boy, offspring of Shiva, brave Hanuman. Yeah, it actually says, uh, victory to the Balabanta, uh, Anjani Kumar. The nice boy, the, who was the son of the, the she was light, and the Pavanasunta, the son of the wind. With a formidable body, you are the child of the family of time. Huh. Kal Kul. Ram always helps you and protects you. Huh. Can some of that rub off on me? Would you come sit next to me and let me rub shoulders with the, mingle with the, with the right people so some of that would rub off, rub off on me? You slay ghosts and goblins, evildoers and beings of improper conduct in the fire of time. To slay these beings is your vow to Ram, O king of protectors. This is your practice for those who call your name. You were the servant of Janak's daughter, Sita. That, remember Janaki was the daughter of Janak. He was the father of Mithila. For Janaki's vow, you did your work without delay. Victory, victory, victory! This voice reaches as high as the sky. By remembering you, unbearable sufferings are destroyed. We bow to your feet with folded hands, Please listen to our prayer. Please listen to us now. What the fuck? <laughs> right now. Arise, arise. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Let these couplets move to Ram, we proclaim, bowing to your feet with folded hands of devotion. Om chum 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 chapala talanta. Om chum 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 with nimbleness they move. Om hanu 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 hanu. They move to Hanuman. Om hum hum call to the restless monkey. Hey monkey! Om Sham Sham, the frightened army of evils runs away. Quickly liberate your people. For those who remember you, you fill them with supreme bliss. Whenever anyone uses this arrow of the very strong, then what harm can ever come to them? Whoever will recite this arrow of the very strong, that's Bajaran Ban, Hanuman will protect that life force. Whoever will recite this arrow of the very strong, ghosts, goblins, and all tremble to see him. Uh, offering incense and always reciting this, all physical difficulties disappear. He who worships Hanuman with love and faith and remembers Hanuman all the time attains the full fulfillment of perfection. Victory to Sita and Ram! Victory!
victory to Hanuman, the son of the wind. Victory to the great Lord Shiva, husband of Uma. Om Sam Sarsvati Namah. We'll pause right here and see if there are any questions or subjects for discussion. <laughs> Before we get into more of the Pacha Pacha Vidya. <laughs> yes, Srini Baba. Swamiji, there is, um, uh, the, he, the poet talks about anxiety and faith, or fear and faith. Yes. Uh, how do we uh, move from uh, this feeling of anxiety to perfect faith? What are the steps? Well, actually, the nine Durgas will take us there. We take that inspiration, we cultivate the knowledge, we begin to practice, we refine the practice, we nurture divinity, we become ever pure, we overcome the darkness of the great ego, and we become one with the great radiant light. And ninth is the goddess who grants perfection. And this is the way to make the journey from fear to faith from anxiety to perfect stillness, Siddhidatri, the grant of perfection. And we just take that inspiration. We see someone who's got that quality, that bhavana, that feeling, that, that attitude, that understanding, and we can understand. We are inspired just to be in her presence, and we just start to study. What is she doing? Why is she doing it that way? How does it work? How much spice does she put in the stew? How does she cook it? It tastes so good. Why does it taste so good? What mantra is she singing? What, what, what attitude is she performing? What she is performing on such a, a level of efficiency? How can we do something similar in our lives? So I believe that will be the path. Now, there are many ways to enumerate the steps along the path, but those nine durgas, they really are efficient stepping stones to tell us exactly how did we get here. We took that inspiration, we saw something and it turned us on. We felt something and we felt good about it. We studied it and we cultivated that knowledge. We started to practice, we refined the practice. Step by step, we come closer and closer to manifesting that objective, which we have defined as the goal or the purpose of our lives. I think that would be the best way. Please. Is Siddhi, is Siddhi a Siddha Kunjika Stotram also Pacha Pacha Vidya, or is that different? With it's different. Words? It is different. It, 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 it diff uh, Siddha Kunjika Stotram has a, uh, an intellectual definition. Uh, let me see if I can't find very quickly. Oh, I can't find very quickly. That's what happens when you have too many things in your iPad. You can't find anything very quickly. No matter how you try, how much effort you put into trying, can you find anything very quickly? Yeah, book. Yes, you're <laughs> absolutely right, Srima. Could I get book? No, no. Uh, uh, well, it, uh, it, it, here's a uh, here's an example of more like a pach pach vidya. Om sahasra bhaku sahasra parano yuddha joya joya bi joya bi joya ajita ajita amita amita aparajita apratita sahasra netro jvala dro jvala pradvala pradvala bi rupa vishvarupa bahurupa madhusudha namaha varaka achyuta nrishinga mahapurusha purushottama vaikunta narayana padmanda bhagobinda aniruddha the modara rishikesha Keshima Paman Sarva Rusu Rot Sadhana Sarva Bhuta Bayankara Sarva Shatru Pramardana Sarva Mantra Pabanjana Sarva Roga Pranashana Sarva Naga Pramardana Sarva Deva Makeshwara Sarva Banda Bimokshana Sarva Gita Pramardana Sarva Gita Prabhupada Sarva Jora Pranashana Sarva Draka Niparana Sarva Papra Pamardana 
And it goes on. And this is more an example of Pach Pach Vidya. Uh, oh, these are sounds of alliteration and they take on this form and this bhavana and this, this spandana, this vibration. You become submerged in the vibration and it takes over your being and it goes beyond the intellectual meanings of, this, of the words and goes into the intuitive cognition of the vibration. And that's the substance. Uh, it, it, it's not rooted in intellectuality. It's rooted in feeling your way right to God. And I bet you we can go ahead, oh, maybe I did, uh, but it, we, we could go ahead and translate and attach an intellectual meaning, but that's not it. It's much higher than the intellectual meaning. And then we talked about the various levels of meaning in Sanskrit. And when you get into this kind of vidya, the dictionary meaning of every syllable is such a lower or gross, more gross form than the intuitive cognition of that vibration. It takes over your being. It takes over your mind. It takes over your life. And it dictates the direction of your love affair. How do you want your love to be manifest? How are you going to share that love? How are you going to demonstrate that love? What is the sincerity of that love? And that comes into this form, of, or these forms. There are many different forms. That's an, one example of it. Uh, uh, they are generally written in Pak, not in, in, uh, uh, in uh, classical rhythms. They're written in blank verse or in free verse. Uh, they have an alliteration and a poetry and a rhyme and a, and a bhavana all its own. You can't even describe it in any other language. Let's see if there are other questions. We have a question from Sadhana Shakti. Namaste, Sadhana. Pranam. Is devotion a quality that, once, that one has to continually nurture and cultivate? Or once we have pure devotion, will it always be present? <laughs> no, we'll always be vigilant. Sadhana, we will always be vigilant. It's just, I mean, I know you love your husband. There's a time that you could get angry with him. You could forget that you love your husband even for a moment. You don't want to do that. So the devotion is the same. Every time we, we've got this devotion, we want to cultivate it, we want to practice it, we want to demonstrate it. I want to remind myself every day that I am striving to be a devotee. Just in case. I don't care if you remember or not. I want to remember that I want to be a devotee. I want to cultivate my devotion every day in as many ways as I've been empowered to do so. So it, it's, if it were once, if it were attained once and never forgotten, then how could Shiva see Mohini? How could Brahma chase after Saraswati? How could Vishnu fall in love with so many beautiful girls? Why would there be a creation? Why wouldn't, do it, it, it's, it's got to be, it's a battle that's won every moment of every day, every breath of every sentient being. We want to win that battle, to not forget. A question from Kamala Ma. Namaste, Kamala Ma. Is the meaning of the arrow as Hanuman the same as the meaning of the arrow in the hands of Chandi? Uh, no, he's a little bit different. Uh, because uh, when the, the arrow as Hanuman, he, he is jumping over the ocean of worldliness uh, to, to unite 
uh, consciousness with his pure nature. And he's doing that through his bhavana as pure devotion. Now, the arrow in the hands of Chandi is the arrow of one-pointed attentiveness. And certainly there is a relationship between one-pointed attention and pure devotion. Because without pure devotion, it's very difficult to pay attention. But put these illustrations, put these deities as illustrations in the different texts, in the context of the, uh, uh, the scripture that we're reciting. We've got a different bhavana, a different feeling when you become a Hanuman jumping across the ocean than you do when you become an arrow in the bow of, of Srima, uh, who is focused, is point, one-pointed attentiveness. So yeah, I don't know that we, we want to say they're different or they're the same or whatever. You, you just get into the bhava of the way that it, this, this poetry is inspiring us and cultivating that, that attitude within us. I don't want to over-intellectualize or psychoanalyze all the gods and goddesses. That's not our duty. We're devotees. We want to learn about them in the context of where they were coming from and where they were going to and how can we do the same things in our lives. I would think that would be more, a more prudent application of this knowledge than trying to intellectualize. Now, uh, well, the arrow in Chandi's hand is the different from the arrow of Hanuman. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. Give us a little poetic license. You're poets, we're covies, we're rishis. We're, we're living it with our heart. We're feeling this and trying to understand it with our heart, not just in our minds. Is there a place for intellectual study of the scriptures? Absolutely! <laughs> Absolutely nishandeha, nashamshaha. You must understand what you're saying and why you're saying it and where you're trying to go and what it's meaning and how do you apply that knowledge in your life and what does it mean to you and why is this important knowledge that the guru told the disciple for thousands of years, memorize this word by word, syllable by syllable, don't make a mistake, pronounce it correctly, think about it, what it means. And because these are ways in which rishis became rishis. Rishis became devas. They, they became, uh, sadhus became rishis, and rishis became gods and goddesses because they learned this knowledge. They became shining ones. So yes, you want to know what you're doing. You want to know why you're doing it. You want to understand what it's about. What's this battle going on? Why am I going to Lanka 5,000 years ago? Why am I going to the Satya Lok and, and, and seeing that, that buffalo getting disturbed, that uh, 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 the, the great eagle in the form of a buffalo is getting cut down 10,000 years ago by a goddess dancing in the clouds? What relevance does that have to me? You want to know. Otherwise, these are just uh, rituals. They're, there's mythology. They're, it doesn't mean anything to you until you understand how do I use this knowledge to free myself from my ego, from my attachments, from my ripus, my kam, kro, lo, mo, mo, da, matsyaja. How do I free myself from anger and passion and desire and greed and lust and, and, and uh, jealousy? How do I use this knowledge? Where is this battle going on? Is it in the clouds in history or is it going on inside me? If it's going on in the clouds of history, I would say you're wasting your time. If it's about mythology, I would say well, this is nonsense. You'll make a better living as a clerk in a department store. If you're, if, I wanted to be a shoe salesman. <laughs> if it's about how do you change yourself into the person that you most highly respect, then this has value. So yes, there's a place for intellectual understanding. And there's a place for intuitional feeling. I don't want you to come to me and say, I love you. 
I don't think it's appropriate for you to have to read somebody else's words to say to me. I want you to say it from my heart. Look me in the eye and tell me that. So there's a place where it comes beyond the mind and beyond the thoughts, and it comes from the heart. And you feel it. We have a question from Vivekananda. Namaste, Vivek. Namaste, Mahan Swami. Hanuman only had eyes for Ram. Even when he met Krishna, he wanted to see Ram. Sometimes so many faces of God help me see divinity everywhere, and sometimes it's simply confusing. Can worshiping Hanuman help me to collapse all the forms of God into my Ishta? I ask because she is all I really want, but she keeps hiding. Thank you. You're living with her! <laughs> Just keep worshiping her in your own house. You... She has so many different forms. She's one woman. And she looks differently with every activity she performs. She's the mother to her children. She's the child to her mother. She's sister to her sister. When she goes to the ball, she wears a ball gown. When she goes to the, to the swimming place, she wears a bikini. <laughs> when, when she goes to temple, she wears blue jeans. <laughs> when she, she looks differently in every relationship, she's one woman. She's one goddess. I call her different names every time she does a different function. She's a psychiatrist. She's a nurse. She's got patients like, she's the cook. She's a cleaner. She's, she's got all kinds of forms that I she... I do everything, but I don't change my dress. <laughs> <laughs> you cheat. <laughs> you are a cheater. All of us change. We wear many hats. <laughs> and we're constantly changing our hat. Here's a professor. Here's a sadhu. Here's a, here's a son. He's a devotee. He's, he's a pujari. He's got so many hats he wears. Huh? And, and one little tika in the back. <laughs> uh, so, Vivek, it's, it's the one divinity. And as you cultivate the relationship with Hanuman, you understand your relationship to Durga. As you cultivate the relationship with Durga, you'll understand who is Chandi. As you, as you fall more deeper and deeper in love with Chandi, you'll know who is Kali, Durga, uh, Lakshmi, Saraswati. You'll know who is Sadhana Shakti. <laughs> and pretty soon you see the goddess everywhere. That sounds like the name of an album we should record. The goddess is everywhere. We have a question from Ambika. Namaste, Ambika. In our effort to fully understand what we are chanting, should we chant in English first? Do we really lose benefits if we're chanting in our native language, even if it allows us to increase understanding in our bhavs? Oh, absolutely. You do not lose benefits. You acquire merits. The more you understand, the more you study. In the Deviathar Shirsham, it says, whoever studies this Deviathar Shirsham gets the merits of five recitations. So if you read the English, you get the benefit of chant having chanted it five times. If you read the English and then you read the Sanskrit, you get it six times. <laughs> if you keep going, you're going to get it and tell it. If you write it down, you get it another time. If you read it back, you get it another time. You hear it, you see it. Pretty soon it becomes yours. And that's the goal. Understand what you say. To say it like you mean it and to mean it like you said it. And to, to do what you're doing because of your love of what, it, what you're saying. You understand what you're saying. It's all good stuff. It's not bad. Now, I mean, as we read through this stuff, all of it's pretty inspiring. It's all cultivating the highest and the best within us. So we should get, keep reading it, studying it, cultivating it, defining it, thinking about it, sravanam, mananam, niditasanam, until you feel it and say it and, and become it. And it's yours. It's not somebody else's words. It came from your heart. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. Jai Hanuman.